Hello everyone. So what we're doing in this part is we're going to be continuing along with the keys and connecting everything together. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing mostly on this lower area and kind of setting it up for these longer pieces to go through. I've kind of been taking a look at how it's all connected. Uh, I have a better idea as to how it all works. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at that. We're going to be adding in these sort of like little slices or slits or whatever you want to call them. Um, just sort of confirming the fact that there are 42 openings here uh, because there are 42 of these guys and 42 main keys. We do have these uh, five outliers, but they'll have their own special sort of opening on the side. Uh, additionally, we do sort of have to fix these side areas because they, they open up a little bit. Um, let me see if I can explain this. So this is sort of like, it kind of looks like it's a a proper divide there, like a plate that's sort of placed over top. Um, if I can find a better reference for it, it's it's not really one continuous piece. Like this is sort of uh, separated in one way or another. This is a really good example of it. Uh, it kind of seems like this is its own different thing, and it's also raised up a lot higher than we currently have it um, in general. So if I look at this reference, and let me just make this board a little bit bigger. Um, it seems to be raised up level to the triangle about maybe about where it's a little bit lower than the midpoint here. Um, I'm trying to find if I can see anything else that sort of gives me a better indication of that. This one as well sort of lines up with that, that idea. So if I just sort of like add a a cut maybe right about here. This is kind of where we want to raise it to. Um, we also have a little bit of cleanup to do on this guy, so let me just isolate it. Uh, we have a lot of weird stuff going on down here that we should probably start fixing up, uh, especially here, having this sort of gap. Uh, just simply doesn't really add anything or make any sense. Um, we also sort of have this just sort of resting on top, which shouldn't really be the case. Uh, so we should be cutting some geo and fixing things up a little bit. Because, um, yeah, just having this resting there really isn't the best idea. Uh, it kind of seems like we also have just a face chilling here. Um, which also isn't a good idea. So let's do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, is this guy symmetrical? Not entirely, so we might just do it in two parts. Um, we have to get rid of that face. Okay, this should be a relatively quick cleanup. I think we just should probably go ahead and delete uh, these faces here. Now if I move this, is there anything else there? Yes, there is a, <laughs> of course, there's a face on the inside here, which we want to get rid of. Um, I have a face on the inside here. Let's just make sure everything's snapping perfectly. We also sort of want to pull this down a little bit uh, so there's no weird gap. It's really unnecessary. So I'm going to add a cut and level it out and do the same on the other side. Um, just snapping that so it's equal. Uh, and essentially, I just want to go in and delete all this geometry. It's really not needed. Um, and we're just going to pull it down and, and snap it down there. So we got to get rid of this stuff too. Um, so I guess we got to get rid of uh, this as well. This little strip on the inside. That one's a bit quicker. Um, yeah, I'm just going to snap that down, snap that down, interesting, something's, oh, it's more forward, interesting, let's grab, oh, I see, okay, so since this sort of curves in, it's not going to match perfectly, so let's just grab all of these and snap them down to their level. And then we'll bring these guys out and snap them 
uh, to where they're supposed to be. That's going to be a lot easier to uh, get that all set up properly. This one we can just snap down. And I guess we should do that on this side as well. Let's go ahead and merge all of that just to see what it gives us. Um, this end piece having this weird curve is not really to my taste, so I'm going to make sure these bottom ones are also level with the, uh, the whole curve. So I'm just taking them and snapping them along the z-axis so forward and back and um just making sure it's all all even all the way down okay these end pieces also have to be even and then these guys we might as well just snap forward missed these ones here uh, and this way, when we start filling in this stuff, it'll actually be a proper fit. Let's go ahead and merge that just in case. Um, this we'll probably have to delete because we want to actually connect everything properly. It was just one big face going underneath edges and, and not being properly connected. So let's extrude this out and take this edge and snap it here. Merge those verts, and we're just connecting. So I can extrude here. I can snap that to the edge, and then say, grab this vertice we just made and snap it down here. Merging all that together. We also don't really need this, so I'm just gonna snap that up. Snap that up as well. Always merge whenever you have vertices on top of one another. Um, I'm going to extrude this, but I want it to be a triangle, so I can shift right click, merge slash collapse, and just collapse edge. That way it'll collapse the edge into a vertice. I can just a vertex snap that to the corner and merge it all. Uh, and then from here, extrude this down. I can then just take this vert and snap it down here, so I already know that's set up. Um, it's the next fastest one, probably. Well, it seems like we should probably delete anything like this that's on the inside. But we can extrude this down, take a vertice, snap it there. Uh, we don't really need this vert, so I'm just going to snap it away and snap this guy down here. Merge all that. Um, interesting. There's still some sort of verts overlapping. Um, interesting. Let's do a similar technique where we extrude that down, collapse, merge that there. I wonder where the sort of face that's not properly attached is. So that all seems good. I suppose we can clean that up a little bit. Um, in fact, we could probably just go ahead and snap it all the way up. And we actually can probably go ahead and mirror um, a great deal of this. I'm going to go and start just snapping all this stuff to the side. Do we even need this? I can probably just delete most of it. Like that. 
if I control backspace, it doesn't seem to really mess anything up. Same with these guys, they seem very unnecessary. Um, and actually I do remember, yeah, okay, I do remember this. We did set this up in a very specific way because we had these guys. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy the top. I think this is how we handled it before. I'm just gonna copy the top using the smart duplicate face, move this over, and then go ahead and delete half of this guy. I'm already noticing some weird stuff going on here. I'm gonna delete that face. Delete that. Let's start reconstructing this in a much more proper manner. Um, I'm just gonna bridge these guys down. This should be a pretty safe way of doing things. Just pressing G uh, like we've done in the past to repeat last command. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a reason for these to be here. I think we can just get rid of these. Just vertex snapping them. That one we're going to have to keep. So let's merge all these guys. Um, Let's see if we can just select this hole and fill hole and see if it works properly. Just add some anchor points so that it doesn't freak out like it did before, which it seems to be doing. Um, it does get kind of picky when you're trying to fill hole and there's so many faces. So let's go ahead and just bridge a couple of these edges. something like that, just so it's like a shape and then we can fill hole and it should work. Right, okay, that's, this is proper now. This is actually working correctly. Um, once again, we probably don't need these, so I'm just going to merge them down. Extra geometry is just gonna make it more complicated for us later on, later on so might as well get rid of it. Um, and I think at this point we can duplicate it. So I'm going to freeze, transform, sleep history, put the pivot in the middle, mirror long X, merge verts on everything. Uh, and then we're going to have to delete these faces along with the bottom ones and uh, replace them with this guy. Good thing we kept him over here. So I'm just gonna move the pivot to the corner, snap it in place. I'm gonna combine these guys. Um, and I've actually been thinking about this for a while, so I'll come back to this in a second, but we have this sort of ball joint thingy in here. I don't necessarily want it poking through the bottom, so what I'm going to do is actually um, close this off. I'm going to bridge this across here. Do the same here. Extrude this down as far as it can go, but then just fill hole rather than like have it go through. That way it's like going through into nothing. We don't have to worry about anything on the opposite side. Um, so let's take a look at this. Make sure we didn't really mess anything up. Hmm. Seems like these plates are not lining up properly.
Is there a gap here before? How did we have that slotting in before? Interesting. I'm thinking we could just cut it out. First of all, let's let's make them the same length. I'm just going to wireframe and then vertex snapping these guys to the end here, or maybe not. It seems to be poking through. Interesting. We can't just have it cutting through like that though. Um, so let's think of the best way to sort of fix that up. Um, I feel like it would just be easiest to cut, just straight up cut it out. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate both of these and just test a Boolean. I wanna see if this would work. Let's freeze transform, delete history. This is our main mesh and we're having it cut out by this. Sorry, this is our main mesh. We're having it cut out by this. If I do a Boolean of difference, it does not like that. Interesting. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's just not letting us do that. I guess we can manually do it. Um, I'm just trying to think, was it like that before? Did we always have it set up that way? There's no way I would have overlooked something like that. I mean, <laughs> probably I, it would be one of the best explanations for it, but this edge here is a little bit too perfect. I'm just going to cut it out. Um, and by that, I mean, go to the cut tool, cut, cut like so. Just going to snap the vertices. Like so. And if I just isolate this guy, I can select these parts. Delete, and then let's just extrude this up and build around it. Just making sure that we're always snapping to these edges. So we don't have any weird geo just floating on top of itself. Merge those verts. Let's clean this up as we go, I guess. This is another <laughs> prime example of why you should be cleaning up as you go. So you don't have to deal with stuff like this. So I'm just sort of closing off everything here. I'm going to collapse that edge, snap it there, can bridge and fill hole. We'll be back to clean that up in the low poly, but that is a solution. I'll have to look through the old tapes and think why I, I set it up that way, but let's go ahead and just worry about doing it on the other side now. Um, very bizarre, but yeah, quick, quick fix either way. Cut, 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 cut. Snapping it. OK. 
Okay. So we'll go ahead and delete those. Um, right, we're gonna wanna get rid of this as well. Wait a second. No, sorry, my brain is turning to goo right now. Um, we're gonna wanna get rid of these parts. I'm just like, what am I doing? Okay, that, that makes more sense. We wanna get rid of those parts. We wanna get rid of all the parts associated with them and extrude it up. Sorry about that. I was literally just thinking like, what on earth am I doing? And yeah, I'm just repeating the same process as in the previous side. Doing a little quick cleanup so that we have to do less sort of extruding and, and merging and mirroring. Grab our edges. Extrude that up. Start with the weird triangle first. And we can just do a series of bridges. Bridge, bridge, and this one will just be a fill hole. Yep, can merge it all. Okay, and that'll be that. Sorry about that, that's kind of abrupt and, and not really called for. We can kind of get back on track now, but that had to be done at some point. I knew going into this part we'd have to do some cleanup on this, but I guess it was just a little bit more than I expected. Um, let's focus back again on raising this up, uh, like I said, to about this line here. Uh, another thing to note though is that this whole screw hole is going to be replaced by this. So I'm actually just going to delete it altogether. Um, we can just go ahead and merge to center. Same on this side. Just selecting all these faces, delete, grabbing the edges and merging them to the center. So let's go ahead and grab that bottom. All oh, right, we should probably get rid of the screws. So yeah, we have the bottom selected. Oh, we must have had some sort of connection piece. That's what it was. Okay, well, I'm still going to raise this up. Oh, yay high. Yeah, that seems about right. And I'm going to have to look further into how we set this up before. Um... If I'm not mistaken, we should be able to easily fix this. Um, right, so this is the, we can see it here. We just don't want it down here. We like how it is here. Okay, this is starting to explain why we had so much additional geometry. Yeah, that goes all the way through. Um, honestly, that might even explain this sort of like extra piece it might be covering that. Yeah, and it's clipping onto here. So that's what this additional piece is. So we're we're not too far off. Uh, I'm going to keep this. Um, despite the fact that we are going to have to lower them. 
if you remember when we set these up, um, I'm just going to move this pivot over so I can see better. These guys do connect here. So that has a purpose. Um, but yeah, it seems like these little claspy pieces are acting as sort of like a something to hold it down onto this ring. So all I have to do is really cut out a piece for this to sort of slot into and we should be fine. Um, so let's isolate. It seems like that's what this cut along was for. Um, so what I'm going to do is just cut here and slice all the way across to here. I suppose I should have looked more into it before I completely gutted it. Uh, we're just gonna have to add another cut. I'm just scaling that so it's completely straight and I'm just snapping it here. Let's go ahead and actually isolate these guys. Can I isolate this? And I think that should line up, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just continuing the line all the way down. And I think naturally it Interesting. I don't know why it doesn't connect. Snap that so it's level. And to these not connect. No, they don't. Why is that? Is it because this vertice is here? Something's weird about this piece. It seems like it had something to do with that, so I'm just going to uh, <laughs> keep those guys deleted and uh, build around it. Go ahead and bridge that. Can fill a hole here. Do the same here. I'm actually gonna delete that edge. Connect that. Okay, so now we have this straight line back all the way through. A little unnecessary and tedious, but we had to do it. So what I'm just gonna do is raise up this middle piece. Just by extruding it up. And we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on the sides. Um, yeah, I'm just extruding it up by holding shift. It kind of destroys the sides that we have, but we're gonna have to work with that. I'm gonna close that off, snap that there, merge verts. Delete the end piece. And fill hole. And that should work. Now let me explain a little bit as to what just happened because I was kind of quiet. Of course I skipped this. Let me clean this up first and then I'll explain. OK, 
Okay, so this side's done. It's extruded up. Everything's connected. Um, what I did was I extruded this up so that it kind of looks like this has a proper thing it's socketing into. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to snap it in a little bit. So it does something that's properly socketing into. It does technically clip through. Um, I suppose we could fix that though. Before that though, let me just snap this over here. And we're gonna have to clean up this side as we did with the last one. We obviously can't be having something like that. Edges on top of edges is always a bad thing. So let's merge that up. Can fill hole. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. Where does this leave us? We have to cut an opening for this. And then we're back on track. If we cut the opening, we're all good. Okay, I'm just going to isolate these guys because I don't want Geo just cutting through Geo. It's not proper. So I'm just snapping. And what we can do is isolate this piece, delete it. Replicate the cut on the bottom. Hmm. What I'm going to do for this is fill hole. Interesting, it's not letting me do that. It seems to be corrupted, broken geometry. Why is that? That's connected. That's all connected. Is this connected? Yes, this one might be, nope. Um. No, none of these seem to have edges on top of edges. I'm not entirely sure. What I'm trying to do is just copy the shape and cut it out at the bottom, and that would sort of solve our clipping geometry issue. Um, I suppose I could just trace it like this. Delete that. Snap that horizontally. Snap that horizontally. If I snap it vertically, it's level with this guy, which means we're gonna have to add a cut like so. This one as well. Yeah, 
and this should allow us to bridge it all down just by selecting the edges. Number of border edges to be selected. Interesting, it's saying I'm selecting an unequal amount of edges. One click, shift, one click. Bridge, interesting. Okay, well that narrows down our problem area. Is this not connected? Is this not connected? Let's try snapping this here, snapping this here, merge, snapping that. Bridge, same error. Interesting, so even if I extrude down and snap it and merge it, Okay, well, it's going to recognize that as one. I'm going to do the same here. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. It's thinking that's all one face. Interesting. I'm going to extrude that up. This is also another problem. <laughs> it thinks all of this is one face, which is bad, but we can. start to sort of clean this up. Snap that there. I'm just trying to make sure everything's clean, Geo. Um, I just, I, where is it? Like selecting this, this is obviously an issue. There's definitely, that shouldn't be one face. Um, like the fact that that little edge is a face is clearly wrong, so I'm gonna delete that and uh, manually just bridge this across and bridge this across and that should do the trick. This is an issue on itself. Um, <laughs> this is like a one polygon thick little edge, uh, but let me just take off isolation. So that is going through proper now. Yeah, the new problem is that this is one thing thick. So I think what I'm gonna do is just straight up can it. Um, fill this hole and that should, that like that's sturdy enough on its own. It's a thick piece of either plastic or metal. So let's clean this up and then we're just gonna mirror this over. Yeah, I should have done a lot more investigation as to why I set this up. Like I said in my last part, it's been a decent amount of time since I uh, have recorded this stuff. So I was a little bit rusty. Let's freeze transform, sleet history, mirror on X, merge verts. And we're just gonna have to delete this hole and we're back on track. Even go ahead and merge faces to center and delete. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just making sure everything's put in properly. Let's go ahead and save to make sure we're back on track. Okay, we can get back to the main point of adding in these cuts and adding in this plate that sort of wraps around uh, this bar here. So let's start by, let's start by adding the plate because um, the cuts are gonna have to be on the inside of the plate. So it seems like, yeah, it's like this sort of squared off piece cuts in, goes down, wraps around and then I'm not entirely sure where it slots back into. We could have it 
maybe wrapping around this on the other end and going in there. That's one of the only places we can really have it going. So let's keep that reference in here. I'm going to flip it. If you hold Alt and Shift, you can flip images. Um, I just want to be looking at uh, the right side for this. Something like so. We'll start by creating a polygon primitive and a cube. Uh, the plate seems to be rather thin. We can put our pivot at the end, snap it against here. It seems to be close to the bottom. Scaled in. Yeah, so it's wide, and then as it cuts off, it goes thin, turns into a rounded piece, and uh, connects on the other end. So I'm just starting on the main square piece. It seems to be about this size and about this high from the bottom. It's rounded on one side. I want to grab that edge and bevel it. Like so. This side also seems to be rounded, but a little bit less. I'll do like a 0.15. And then, yeah, about maybe a bit more than halfway. Hmm. Maybe a bit less than halfway, rather. It uh, cuts off and starts going down. Now, what I want to do is have sort of a slice of this that I can connect into really easily. So I'm just going to grab this. I just use the cut tool, smart duplicate that face, center pivot, um, and then we can extrude it, get the thickness out there a bit, maybe 0.1, and we can have it sort of wrapping around this. So this is a whole separate object now. I'm going to delete these edges. Yeah, we'll have this sort of plop down onto that. Because of so, we added in these extra details. We should probably slide them somewhere else. I do want to keep them. So what I'm going to do is just move them over here. And then we want this to line up with where this is going to drop down onto. Let me make this a bit bigger. Because I want this to rotate down and back up, but I want it to sort of rotate back up here, and this is blocking it currently. So I'm going to move it. I'm actually going to snap it to the inside of this. Have it. Hmm. No, I can't afford to move that face. What is a good solution to this? Um, come down. I could have it come down on one end, have it be long, and then wrap around the other end. So I could have it like a longer piece. 
cut in half. Have it come down here, flat and flush, and then this end wraps around the back. I think I'm gonna try that out. It's an idea, so we'll have that come down and then this is just a crude example, but then we could have like something like that. That works, so it still makes sense. So I think I'm gonna go with that. Um, we'll have this come down. We can adjust the thickness on this guy. So we need it to plug into something. We'll have it go right there. Make sure that this is even. Actually, it seems like it gets much, much thinner. Regardless, we can mesh combine this merge the verts, and then let's go ahead and drag this way in so it's skinnier, and then sort of give it this kind of tapered treatment. It seems to be skinny or thicker and then become skinny. Okay, so I'm actually pretty happy with how we're gonna do this. We are going to we're going to extrude this in. We're mimicking the sort of thin look here. So it comes down, it thins out, and then it comes back out the other end and plugs into something up here. So we can just extrude, maybe not that one, extrude and extrude. And just have it snap up there. Yeah, that looks like it works, especially when we, you know, eventually soften this guy out and it has panel lines and everything. I'm just trying to think, should this be super straight? And I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, one thing I do want to change though is have it be flush so the thickness is consistent. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. We can then add the bolt, mirror this guy over, add the cuts, and we'll probably call it a part there. Um, seems like a natural place to end it. And then in the following part, we can actually connect all these guys up. So let's just do our Boolean. I'm surprised we haven't done a successful Boolean <laughs> in this part. Um, so let's freeze transforms, delete history on that guy. We're going to be using a um, screw of the same size because that's what the reference sort of shows. This is the same size as this. So I want a cylinder that matches the size of this. I'm going to bring in a cylinder with 20 sides. Just snap it into position. Okay, that's the right size. Let's Isolate these guys, 
for these transforms lead history. I am going to puncture this guy all the way through. Um, or perhaps not. That wouldn't actually make sense, would it? I just want it to be... No, this would go all the way through. We're just not going to puncture through to the other side because uh, you'll never be able to see that. Uh, regardless, let's go ahead and open up our bool manager, traditional boolean, select our main, shift select our cutting mesh, new boolean, clean up, delete history and base objects. And then we will, of course, snuggle this guy in there. I think we should give this a color as well. It seems pretty easy to forget about. Um, actually, I do want to kind of recenter it. it. Seems awfully lopsided. And raise it. it seems to be hugging the top more than anything. Kind of like wrapped around that that corner kind of looks nice, but I'll keep it a tad more centered to be more accurate. And yeah, let's give this uh, maybe a green color. Okay. To mirror it over. So put the pivot in the center, just holding X to grid snap. Mirror X. Dupe this guy over. Give him a bit of a different rotation. Nice, that's that. Um, okay. What is next? What is next? Adding the cuts. We gotta add the cuts. This part should be relatively simple. Uh, it is 42 cuts with then two larger cuts on the side. What do I mean by that? I mean that there are 42 little slits um, like so. And then there seems to be these larger pieces that sort of clip into things on the side. Uh, I just wanna give them a larger hole um, just so that they're comfy. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I kind of want the, the holes or the cuts to be roughly the same size maybe as uh, these pieces that we made. Just because this is kind of going to be the, the shape that's carrying through. And then we got to figure out how high these cuts actually go. Smear this back. You seem to go up a, a pretty solid distance, honestly. Like if we get a front shot, the distance between the the cut and the top isn't isn't too much. It's something kind of like that. about like an inch and a half in between. I feel like we could probably lower our, our whole thing a bit, but I'm going to get the cuts in and then if we have to lower them, I'll do that uh, maybe off camera and fill you guys in on it um, and how exactly I did that. Um, just because I feel like I've made a, a, a decent amount of mistakes in this video and I kind of want to you know, spare you guys from having to see all of that over and over again. Maybe I could just do it right now. I'll just select all of them, all the pieces I want to move. Select the vertexes off of the selection. And then I can just grab these guys and pull them down a little bit. Just a tad. I'm not moving it a bunch. Um, and then I can sort of bring these chosen pieces uh, back up. 
Okay, let's get back to the cut. Something like so. We're going to need 42 of them. So let's see what that looks like. Um, we can use our edit. Um, duplicate special. Number of copies, 42. Rotation, we are not rotating this time. We are translating. So how much space should we have between them? Let's duplicate one and move it over and say about that much. Seems to be right. Like It doesn't look like there's a lot of space between these guys, maybe more than that. Let's go with something like that. And this is just gonna be a bit of trial and error. So this guy, if I freeze his transforms and move it over about yay, is about minus one. We don't want that, so minus 0.75. Let's go with minus point, minus point 0.8 for our first try. So transition is going to be minus 0.8, number of copies is 42. Let's apply that and see what we get. Okay, so if we center it, you know, honestly, this kind of is like the perfect spacing. Uh, it's now coming to my attention that these pieces that are like special pieces don't actually go through slits. They wrap around these bars at the bottom. And this is kind of perfectly spaced. Like if I do a mesh combine, and then I think this one might have a second on top. Nope. Um, if I do that and then vertex snap that to the middle, like look how perfect that spacing is. Uh, I'm going to try that. Before I do that, though, I'm going to duplicate this piece um, and add it to our hidden layer. That way we have a backup of it. But let's go ahead and try a Boolean with this and see how it uh, turns out. Hopefully not horrible. Um, we're going <laughs> to... I know, it's very optimistic. Um, we are going to want this to be thick enough to go all the way through. Something like so. Uh, let's go ahead and freeze transforms and delete history and try this out. I'm just going to be doing a Boolean, new Boolean operation, clean up, delete history and base objects. And yeah, we can really take these pieces now, get them out, get them under, connect them, and really start to see where it's all gonna be connected. Um, let me take a look at this for a second. Ah, that's what it is. So if these didn't properly bridge across, as they were supposed to. As you can see, it's hollow. It shouldn't be like that. Um, so there's a fair amount of cleanup to do here. As you can see with something like that and something like this. So if I merge that, what I'm trying to say is it should be Interesting. Let me fill hole. Whoa. Merge. Why is this not weird? What has this not connected properly? Why is this not just merged?
That's so weird. Okay, now I can fill this hole. It was just not connected properly. Like, it'll be the same here. Yeah, it'll say that this isn't merged and neither is neither is this, but if I merge them now, they'll be connected and I can fill hole. Very bizarre. Anyways, back to these little teeth things. Um, they're supposed to be bridged across. Like so. Um, yeah, this side also has its fair share of cleanup. So if I bridge that across, I can't do that because there's these inner pieces. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'll do one of these. I'm not going to record the entire cleanup of this because that's a bit um, excessive. I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this because... Hmm. It's very tight to the camera. It's kind of an awkward thing to do. Well, on the bright side, um, this is mirrored, right? So we really only have to do half of it. So I'm just going to clean this up. Depending on how long this takes, I might just skip but I want to get a basic uh, understanding across to you guys how I'm going about doing this. I feel like I should just delete these edges and then connect it like so. I feel like this would be a lot easier, right? You can use the cut tool for this. I believe I brought this up before, but I have a, a hotkey for when I select two vertices and hit control two, which is something mapped to my mouse. Um, it'll create a connection point. This is something that can be set up in the hotkey menu. Skipped one. Just enjoy the free keyboard ASMR at this point. <laughs> I'm just repeating the same command over and over again. Okay, so that's those parts connected. Um, the bottom, crazy stuff going on the bottom. Just gotta snap some verts. Thank God this is a uh, 
A symmetrical piece, though. I'm thinking if there's a way for me to do one, delete the rest, and then dupe it over. Like, what if I... Hmm. What if I cut all these? Because then I could do the same setup on the other side, delete one of these, have a good one, duplicate them all over. I think that's the fastest way to do it. This is definitely going to be one of the more interesting parts to return to for the low poly and especially the UVs. Um, this is going to really jack up our poly count more than anything because this is not really a detail we could... I mean, we could bake it down. Um, and realistically, if you were doing this in a game, I would hope you would bake it down. But something like this we want to actually include as geometry because we have geometry intersecting with geometry. You can easily fake that with a normal map, um, but we're trying to go for the the bonus pizzazz <laughs> more than anything with this this model. This model is supposed to be over the top. Um, right, we have to delete these guys. So yeah, if you were um, to ask me like, oh, how would I do this at work? Or how would I do this on like a, a project I was doing for school or something? I would definitely 100% bake this down and just have the geo intersecting. Uh, but this is ultimately gonna look nicer. And when it comes to my portfolio pieces, um, you know, I can demonstrate, I make things work properly and have them optimized with the professional side of the work that I do. Um, whether it's the contract work I do or the full-time job that I'm working at. Um, but when it comes to my portfolio, I just like to show, hey, this is what I'm capable of doing. This is what I can make when the, uh, the gloves are off, you know? So this is <laughs> definitely not something I'd recommend doing ever in a normal game just because of how ridiculous the uh, the poly count is. Like this is like several buildings worth of polygons for a typewriter. Last ones, we could probably have them go up here. Okay, and like I said, I can just connect. These guys. Oh, um, will this work? I th okay, this curve is gonna make it not work as well as I thought, but it should technically work. Damn it, I didn't think that part through. Um, no, we can still get it to work with this technique. Um, it just won't be as speedy as I initially thought it was going to be. I thought we were just going to be able to duplicate the pieces and snap them in, but since there's this curve here, what we're going to have to do is sort of vertex snap things to get them to align a little bit. and um, It'll just be an additional step, but after that it should be, should be all done. So
yeah okay what I'm gonna do is delete all of these guys but the first one I can kind of get this one looking good so kind of add a cut here snap it we can start to get our proper geo in bridging stuff how it should be And then, yep, extrude this up. Bridge. Bridge. And that should be all good. What I do need to do is, well, oh, that was scary. Okay, let's go ahead and save before we do anything else. Um, let's harden this edge. And yeah, clean up this inside. Extrude that up. Add a cut here for it to merge to. This one already has something pretty close. We can, I think, just bridge this across. Nice. Um, but anyways, the main plan was to now just take this piece, smart duplicate it, and we should, since everything's the right size, be able to just you know, duplicate it and snap it over. The issue then on the, is just the back and the thickness of everything. So that's the extra step I was talking about. But this part should be quick. We'll just have to return to the back and snap things there. Um, but realistically, that's just not gonna take too long. So let's just do it, just get it done. And then one more, this last one though is cut in half. Like so. Yeah, it's just this that I'm talking about that's not um, going to be perfectly aligned. So, this first one should be good. Excuse me. We're just going to have to grab these edges and just make sure they're all snapped. Uh, where they're supposed to be. Man, if this back part was flat, I feel like we would be a lot further. This back plate has been uh, a lot of issues more than anything else. I feel like um, I'll have to pay closer attention to it moving forward. Um, and that being said, I don't think we are adjusting it 
anymore until the high poly. Um, and now that we've gone through with this, I feel like it is actually in a pretty good position for when we do return to it for the low poly. Um, we've had a, a good chance to sort of go through most of it and, uh, you know, successfully clean up a lot of overlapping geo. Um, the rest of the model will probably have some of that kind of stuff, but not to this extent. So this is, it's nice to sort of have that behind us now. Um, and it is a little bit hard to sort of recognize where the stuff is going to be. But the nice thing is uh, when you do something, for example, like UVs, that's a really easy way to sort of start identifying where you have this, this overlapping geo. Um, so once we get there, we'll be able to clear all that kind of stuff out. Uh, I'm not worried that we're going to sort of miss anything and end up with some really weird, I don't know, things like baking or weird texturing uh, because of faces that shouldn't be where they're supposed to be. So um, I still think we're in a good position. I think this episode has been a little bit sporadic. And if you're watching this, I, I do apologize for that. Um, I guess I'm just a little bit tired right now, but I did feel like I fumbled a little bit with this one. Um, I have to admit, as much as I do love making this typewriter and as much as I do love making these tutorials, uh, this section, <laughs> if I wasn't recording uh, this as a tutorial, I probably would have had this entire model done like three or four times over at this point. Um, doing the explanation part and setting up the recording and having everything ready to explain uh, takes a lot longer and it also takes a little bit out of you. Um, so at this point, knowing that, uh, I kind of feel like, damn, I really wish we could move along further. Um, there's a lot of reasons I can't just record this kind of stuff every single day. Um, and I can't do it for longer. There's render times and I also have to do it when my, my roommate's out. So I'm not, um, you know, picking up the background noise that he has and whatnot. So there's those reasons. Uh, hopefully you guys understand that, you know, I just kind of want to move on and get to the next portion of this. There's also other things that I want to be making uh, as well, right? So anyways, hopefully you guys understand that. Uh, with that being said, we can go ahead and combine all of this. We can merge the vertices on it. We can put the pivot in the... in the middle. Uh, this is not supposed to be here, actually. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's not supposed to be there. Freeze transform, sleet history, mirror long X. And there we go. Damn, that looks like it's actually getting really full. Uh, we're going to work on the sort of legs uh, in the next part. Um, that'll do it for now. Thank you guys for watching. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I apologize for sort of having a bit more of a sporadic episode this time. It was a lot of unpredicted cleanup. I feel like I was a little bit quieter. Um, as you can see, it's a lot later than I typically record these things. There's a lot on my mind at the moment. So yeah, hopefully it wasn't too, too bad. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Next part will be a lot better and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys in the next part. See ya.